In this section, there's more about changing materials. In this section, we'll look in more detail at useful products from organic sources, and then look at quantitative chemistry. First, useful products from organic sources. In the Foundation Chemistry programme, we looked at fractional distillation. This process separates crude oil into different hydrocarbons, fractions, according to the different numbers of carbon atoms they have. Different numbers of carbon atoms gives them different boiling points, so the different fractions can dense out at different points up the fractionating column. Cracking is another important industrial process used in the production of plastics. This clip explains what happens. A mixture of alkanes from the refinery is fed into the furnaces behind me. In there, it is heated to very high temperatures, which cause the molecules to break into smaller molecules known as alkenes. This process is known as cracking. The carbon atoms in alkanes are linked by single chemical bonds. Cracking produces alkenes, which contain a double bond. So cracking uses heat to split large molecule hydrocarbons into smaller molecules. This produces different substances. Cracking is used to change alkanes with single bonds into alkenes with double bonds. Double bonded alkenes are more reactive than single bonded alkanes because the double bond between carbon atoms is less stable. It's then more easy to open up the double bonds and produce other hydrocarbons. One example of the cracking process is to crack ethane, C2H6, with single carbon bonds into ethene, C2H4, with double carbon bonds. Ethene is a starting material for many plastics. Another process called polymerization creates some useful hydrocarbons from those double bonded alkenes. As you watch the next clip, make a note of the different products made and their different properties. This is ethene. It has two carbon atoms attached by a double bond. Each of the carbon atoms has two hydrogens attached. The double bond allows us to join lots of these molecules together to make polyethene or polythene. Polythene is produced from ethene by polymerization. Ethene is a gas and a strong vessel is needed to contain it since the process takes place at very high temperature and pressure. Even under these conditions, polymerization won't go by itself, so a catalyst has to be added. Large amounts of ethene gas are pumped in along a pipe to create a high pressure. The more ethene molecules there are to collide with each other, the faster the polymerization will happen. Once their double bonds are broken, the ethene molecules can link together using single bonds, and ethene gas becomes solid polythene, one of the most widely used polymers. Polymers are made of very long chain molecules. I've got a model here of polythene. The black beads represent the carbon atoms, and the white beads represent the hydrogen atoms. A typical molecule would have many thousands of these carbon atoms all joined together, and on this scale, it would be a few kilometers long. The bonds between the carbon atoms are covalent bonds, which are very strong. But it's possible to rotate the molecule around these covalent bonds, and this makes these long chain molecules very flexible indeed. These beads are a much better model of what a polymer chain is like when it's warm and flexible and we can mould it into whatever shape we like. To keep it in that shape, we cool it down. And this does two things to the molecules. Firstly, it can stop them rotating around the covalent bonds, and this locks the polymer chain in shape, therefore it can't move. The second thing it can do is, as we cool it down, the polymer chains pack together very closely, and they don't have room to move. 
therefore again they're locked in shape. If we heat this polymer up again, it will become flexible again. And polymers that can be processed like this are called thermoplastic. There are many different thermoplastics with different properties, but they can all be moulded in this way, and that's what makes them so useful and so widespread. This is polythene, our basic raw material. When we heat this, it becomes soft and mouldable. From these little beads, we can make any shape we want. Today, this machine is set up to make wheel bins. We take the, the heated polythene, heat it up to 240 degrees Celsius, and push that into the mould. Once the mould is full, we need to cool it down to below 80 degrees C. That then retains the shape. That's the wheel bin made. In a thermo set, the polymer molecules become bonded to each other to form a network that is not flexible. If we reheat a thermo set, these bonds won't break, so we cannot remould a thermo set, unlike a thermoplastic. So polymerization joins several single molecules, monomers, into long strings of molecules called polymers. So the monomer, ethene, produces the polymer, polyethene, polythene. The long strings of molecules create materials, like polythene, that are flexible and can be easily moulded. Thermoplastic polymers can be heated and moulded several times. Thermoset polymers can only be heated and moulded once. That's the end of the section about organic products. This section takes a look at quantitative chemistry. All chemical reactions can be represented by a chemical equation. That can be a word equation or a balanced chemical equation. If you burn a piece of magnesium, the word equation for the reaction is magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide. That tells you what's happening, but nothing about the quantities of each substance involved. That's where the balanced chemical equation comes in. First, replace the words in the word equation with the correct chemical formulae for each substance, the reactants on the left and the products on the right. The chemical symbol for the element magnesium is Mg, plus the symbol for oxygen gas, O2, gives the symbol for the compound magnesium oxide, MgO. But that's not quite right because the equation isn't balanced. On the left of the equation there are two oxygen atoms making up a molecule, while on the right there's only one. Making it 2MgO balances the oxygen, two on each side of the equation. But then the magnesium doesn't balance, two on the right and only one on the left. To put that right needs two magnesium on the left of the equation. Finally, add the state symbols for solid, liquid, gas or aqueous solution. So the final balanced chemical equation for magnesium burning is 2Mg plus O2 gives 2MgO. So the steps to follow while writing a chemical equation are write the equation in words. Write the equation using the correct formulae. Check each atom in turn to see that the equation is balanced. Add the state symbols. A correct balanced chemical equation shows how the atoms change their partners during a chemical reaction and the relative number of atoms or ions in the compound. One vital thing to remember is that during a chemical reaction, nothing new is created and nothing existing is destroyed. Atoms are rearranged. Balanced equations give quantities, so it's possible to calculate the masses of reactants and products involved. This is important, particularly in industry, where they need to work out for every chemical process the amount of reactants that will be required and the amount of product that can be produced. So how do you do it? First, we need to know about the mole. The mole is the standard unit 
for measuring quantities of atoms or molecules. For elements, one mole has the same mass in grams as its relative atomic mass. So one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams because the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12. And one mole of hydrogen weighs one gram because the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is one. For compounds, one mole has the same mass as all the ingredients of its chemical formula. Take methane, CH4. One mole of methane weighs 12 grams for the carbon, plus four times one grams for the hydrogen. That's 16 grams altogether. Now let's see what calculations we can do using this. This equation, carbon C plus oxygen O2 gives carbon dioxide, CO2, tells you that one atom of carbon reacts with one molecule of oxygen to produce one molecule of carbon dioxide. It also tells you that one mole of carbon reacts with one mole of oxygen to produce one mole of carbon dioxide. We can now use the relative atomic masses to change moles to grams. The atomic mass of carbon is 12 and of oxygen is 16. So 12 grams of carbon plus 16 times 2 that's 32 grams of oxygen, produce 44 grams of carbon dioxide. So this tells us exactly how much in grams of each of the reactants, carbon and oxygen, is needed to produce how much of the product, carbon dioxide. Here's a sample question. How much lime calcium oxide, CaO, can be produced by heating 100 grams of limestone, CaCO3. The relative atomic mass of carbon is 12, calcium is 40, and oxygen is 16. First, we need to work out the balanced chemical equation for this reaction, and it's calcium carbonate, CaCO3, gives calcium oxide, CaO, plus carbon dioxide, CO2. But we know that one mole of limestone gives one mole of calcium oxide. Converting to grams by using the atomic masses, the limestone on one side weighs 40 grams for the calcium, plus 12 grams for the carbon, plus 16 times 3 grams for the oxygen. The lime on the other side weighs 40 grams for the calcium and 16 grams for the oxygen. So, 100 grams of limestone produces 56 grams of lime.